This was what Paul challenged us on last week. Jesus wants us to ask. And my question to you is, what have you asked for this morning? Or have you just turned up at church expecting same, same? Well, I don't know about you, but that's not what I want. So this morning, this is what God's put on my heart, is that he wants to grow us in what it means to live by the Spirit. He wants to grow us in what it means to walk in the Spirit so that we can experience his life to the full. Isn't that what we want? Yeah. I've called my talk a penny for, for your thoughts. All right, And as we go on, you'll understand that. You might notice there was paper and pens on the, tape, on the uh, seats. We're going to use that a little bit later on, or you might want to take some notes while I talk. All right, But keep it, you'll need it. Now, I have in my hand a one-minute sand timer. Do you know how many grains of sand are in that one-minute sand timer? I've got a prize for, for someone who can guess. Who, who would like to have a guess at how many grains of sand are in this sand timer? Quick, who? Uh, a lot more. A lot more. <laughs> less. Abby? Nah, less. Come on. Thousand? Less. 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 Come on, one more guess. Okay, I'll give you I'll tell you what it is then. I get the chocolate. Well, while you're thinking about that, I want to look at this passage in Psalm 139, verse 17 and 18. And it says, How precious also are your thoughts for me, God! How vast is the sum of them! Were I to count them, they would outnumber the sand. When I awake, you are still with me. So, how many grains of sand? There are 90,000 grains of sand in that one-minute timer. That's pretty amazing. Now, a little bit of maths. If we divide that by 60, that tells me that there are 1,500 grains of sand every second that pass through that timer. So if God's thoughts are like the grains of sand, every second, 1,500 thoughts. A different version, the Living Bible, says this about that passage. It says, How precious it is, Lord, to realise that you are thinking about me constantly. I can't even count how many times a day your thoughts turn towards me. And when I awaken in the morning, you're still thinking of me. It's pretty amazing, isn't it? Okay. So if God is constantly thinking about us and wanting to communicate with us, why don't we hear him? And I came up with a few thoughts of my own. One... Maybe I'm just not listening. True? Or maybe we're tuned to a different frequency. You know, recently I've been looking at new cars. And I've been looking at that BYD Addo 3 car, electric car. And I started to notice them in the shopping centres. I started to notice them everywhere I went. In fact, at church here, someone's got one which is blue. Oh, over here, someone's got one, a blue one, which is the colour I liked. Because I was tuned to the frequency of looking for them, I got it. You know, before I was even thinking of a a car, did I ever look at them? Some of us aren't tuned in to that frequency. Or maybe we're distracted, you know, we're all busy people. We've got grandchildren, we've got children, we've got jobs. We're busy, we get distracted. Or this one, for me, was pretty important. Maybe we don't expect God to talk to us. That's pretty important, that one. Okay, just a bit of my background. I come from a non-churched, non-religious background. And when I was in year 11 at high school, um, I'd broken my leg and it was in a full cast. And my best friend across the street used to have to drive me to and from school. And I remember one day specifically, he was driving me home and he says to me that he'd become a Christian. And I go... What's a Christian? I had no idea what a Christian was. And um, 
he briefly explained to me that God wanted relationship with us, but sin, all of us have sinned and caused a separation. And he, he explained briefly that there was hope. I went home and I remember we had an outhouse at our place and um, I was sitting in the outhouse and no one told me that God didn't talk to you. No one told me that God didn't communicate with you. So I expected him to talk to me. And I remember having this conversation with God and I'm sitting there and I'm going to God and I say to God, God, I'm a pretty good person. I haven't murdered anyone. I'm not on drugs. I'm pretty good. I remember this thought comes into my head. One of these precious thoughts. And the thought said to me, but Wayne, have you ever lied? Have you ever stolen? Have you ever cheated? Did your parents sit you down one day? Wayne, today I'm going to teach you how to lie. None of us, our parents don't do that. Hopefully yours haven't. <laughs> but I get another thought into my head. One of these precious thoughts. And he said, my definition of sin is wrong. Totally wrong. Sin isn't about doing a bunch of stuff. Sin's about a heart issue. And this is what he said to me. He said, Wayne, it's you living your life your way and leaving me out of it. I couldn't argue with that. That's exactly how I was living my life. Me living my life my way and leaving God out of it. I broke down right there, I asked Jesus into my life and committed my life to Jesus. When people come to me and say they're a pretty good person, this is what I share with them. Because we can be good people, but ultimately if we're still living our life our way and leaving God out of it, that's what sin is. I remember leading life group and um, there was only eight people in the room at the time and we're leading life group and I'm just learning about getting God's precious thoughts and all of a sudden I get this massive pain in my chest and I know I'm not having a heart attack and fear starts to come in. What do I do with that? And the thought, the thought goes, you need to share this with a group because someone in the group has a pain right here. Well, when there's only eight people, I'm going to look a real idiot if no one owns up to this. You ever, you ever go through these sort of thoughts? Yeah. I sure did. Anyway, I eventually shared it and I'm ready to go straight on to the next thing. But my lovely wife, um, excuse me, does anyone here own up to that? Has anyone got a pain there? I feel like crawling under the couch at this point in time. To my amazement and shock, this lady puts her hand up and said, that's me. We, we gather around her and several people start praying for her and I sense it wasn't going anywhere. And another precious thought comes into my head. It's not a pain in the chest that's the problem. The problem is she's got a broken heart. And, we, and I gently share this with her and we see this lady released and freed up to live a productive life. You know, what is the answer then? If, if we, we could be not listening to God, we could be distracted, we could be listening on the wrong frequency, or maybe we didn't expect it, but what's the answer? And I believe the passage, Psalm 139, gives us the answer that how much God loves us and longs to communicate with us. Let's have a look. At verse 4, 5, and 6. This is passages about God is an all-knowing God. He knows everything. He knows what we're going to say before we even say it. And it says, Behold, Lord, you know it all. Now, the, the songs we sang this morning I thought were great because they talked about he's a good God. You know, God is not like a school teacher. I saw that. You're in trouble. <laughs> That's not what God's like. How do I know that? Because it tells us here, it says, Behold, Lord, you know it all. You have encircled me behind and in front. 
You've placed your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It's too high. I cannot comprehend it. God is out to protect and guide us, to love. God wants to love on us. I don't know about you, but I want God to love on me. Again, when we look at verses 13 to 15 of Psalm 139, this is what it says. You cre- for you created my innermost parts, you knit me together while I was in my mother's womb. I give thanks to you because I am awesomely and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works. My soul knows it very well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in secret and skillfully formed in the depths of the earth. My, your eyes have seen my formless substance and in your book were written all the days that were ordained for me when as yet there was none of them. That second line there, you knit me together in my mother's... My mother was a knitter. I tried it once. She taught me how to purl and knit and I was going to make this rectangular blanket. It ended up being a map of Australia. <laughs> but my mother... She made these beautiful jumpers with patterns and colours. And you know what? A knitter has a pattern and they follow it very specifically. God loves us so much that he knitted us together while we're in a plan and a purpose. God loves us and longs to communicate with us. But... Did you notice a small word in the passage when I put up it the first time? How precious also are your thoughts. You see, I can't come to learn that we can't get to verse 17 and 18 unless we understand verses 1 to 16. And 1 to 16 is how much God loves us, how much God longs to communicate with us. And when we understand that, then when we get to verse 17 and 18, we'll understand that he longs and loves to communicate with us but to do that we need a revelation of god i can't drum it up i'm not i'm going to try harder it doesn't work like that i need a revelation of god and (coughs) ephesians chapter 1 verse 17 says this i always pray that the god of our lord jesus christ the father of glory may grant you a spirit of wisdom and of revelation that gives you a deep and personal and intimate insight into the true knowledge of him. For we know the Father through the Son. I think an important part there is when we get wisdom and revelation from God, it's true knowledge of him. I have an image of God which isn't correct. God's changing it all the time every day, but it can be incorrect. I might not believe that he loves me. I might not believe that he longs to communicate with me. But when we want... So we need this revelation of God. My opening, one of my slides at the beginning was live by the Spirit, walk also by the Spirit. Look at what it says in the message. Since this is the kind of life we have chosen, the life of the Spirit, let us make sure we don't just hold it as an idea in our head or a sentiment in my heart, but work out its implications in every day of my life. I don't know about you, but I'm sick at times living my life as if it was an idea in my head or a sentiment in my heart. I don't want to live like that. Hebrews 11.6 says, Without faith, it's impossible to walk with God and please him. I've got my own definition of what faith is. This is what I've written. Faith is living your life in such a way that it doesn't make sense, apart from the fact that God exists. You know, as I live my life, my parents thought I was crazy because they had, didn't have faith. They didn't believe that God existed. The choices I made, I got brick walls in all the time. But because as they looked... It didn't make sense. Why would you resign from a good teaching job to work in youth work in a church? Why would you move from New South Wales to Queensland? Why would you do all these dumb things according to their understanding? But see, from my understanding, I know that God exists. And it makes sense. 
God's loved on me many, many times. One of the ways in recent times was when we came back from, from Thailand. Megan and myself were in Thailand as missionaries for three years and we sensed it was time to come home. And um, we're both high school teachers and to get a job in Australia in the middle of the year is really, really difficult. But I get one of these precious thoughts. But I've, I've, I've called this one precious and crazy thoughts. And this is what I heard God say to me. You know, we were, it was January and we're coming back in July. And God says to me, Wayne, the next six months are going to be like a car GPS. What? Like a car GPS? He went on to explain to me that when you put a destination in your GPS... All right, so we're coming back from Thailand to Australia. When you put a destination in GPS, your GPS is absolutely quiet. Have you noticed if you're on the right path? And when you're 300 metres out, it says turn left or turn right. But if you're on the right track, it's absolutely quiet. He was asking us to walk by faith. Many people would ask us, what are you going to do when you get back to Australia? And we'd say, well, we don't really know. God's got it under control. And I'd share this GPS story with them. As time went on, we were looking for jobs on the internet and um, I finally got an interview. The interview was on the day we were flying out of Chiang Mai to come back to Australia. I had a telephone interview and after one hour of this telephone interview, they offered me a job to start in two weeks' time. So it wasn't 300 metres out, it was the day we were flying out. We, we got back, the week we got back, Megan had an interview and she got the job at the same school. God was true to his word. And he always is. Those precious thoughts. You know, those precious thoughts kept us for six months in peace. If I hadn't got that precious thought, I probably would have been in fear and worry. But God has precious thoughts for us. But we can't do it ourselves. Do you think I'm smart enough to come up with a, that GPS idea? Who would come up with that idea? I, I didn't. And Jesus gives us the example. It says, so Jesus answered him saying, I assure you and most solemnly say to you, the son can do nothing of himself unless it is something he sees the father doing. For wherever things the father does, the son does also in the same way. For the father dearly loves the son and shows him everything that he himself is doing. And the father will show him greater works than these so that you will be filled with wonder. There he is again. Father dearly loved the Son. The Father loves us and longs to communicate with us and give us his precious thoughts. Do you think Megan and myself were filled with wonder after the word of be at peace but in GPS? Be quiet. You're not going to hear anything. It's just going to be absolutely quiet and we've got to walk by faith and yet after six months, the day we were flying out, God answers the prayer. That's, that was putting the test of living your life in such a way that it doesn't make sense apart from God existing, doesn't it? Yeah. All right? So let me encourage you with that. Um, God, God loves us and longs to communicate with us, but let's have a look at this verse in John 5.39. It says, You have your heads in your Bibles constantly because you think you'll find eternal life there. But you miss the forest for the trees. These scriptures are all about me. Here I am standing right before you and you aren't willing to receive from me the life you so want. I'm not saying that reading your Bible is wonderful. But we need to come before Jesus. This was a great quote that I saw. A book will not confront you about your sin. The author will. You know, we need to come before Jesus. He wants us to come before him this morning. And he promises to give us the life that we so long for. I don't know about you, but I don't want to hold it as an idea in my head or a sentiment in my heart. I want to learn to live and walk by the Spirit and experience life to the full. And I'm sure that that's what you want as well. You know, I said at the beginning, how many grains of sand? 90,000 grains in a minute. 
1,500 grains a second. Let's come to Jesus and receive those precious thoughts. You know, when I started, I said my title was A Penny for Your Thoughts. I've changed the name. Precious and priceless are your thoughts for me. That's what I want. I want his precious and priceless thoughts. And I want to learn to walk by the Spirit and to experience life to the full. The piece of paper that you've got, we're going to, we're going to do this now. We're going to spend a bit of time where if you grab a piece of paper and pen, make sure you've all got one. And we're going to ask Jesus, we're going to come before Jesus. If you're willing to come before Jesus and ask him for a precious thought. Now let me, let me just say this. Did you notice the word precious? It did not say condemning. It did not say to shame you. It's a precious thought. I don't want you to start evaluating what, you, what God's saying to you. If I started evaluating the pain in my chest or that I'm, it's going to be like a GPS, I wouldn't have even thought about it. But by faith, I needed to just believe. So I'm just going to give you a few minutes to say, God, I'm coming to you. Jesus, I'm coming to you. I want one of your precious thoughts and I want you to write it down. And I'm going to either share it with the person next to you in a minute. So just spend a minute in quietness just asking God now for a precious thought. While some of you are finishing writing that down, let me encourage you to join a life group. There's no safer, better place than to try out listening to God than in a life group. How about you share with the people next to you what you sense God um, said to you? If you didn't get anything, it's okay. Just listen to the others. So just share with the people next to you. Yeah, just share a little bit of what it is, not the meaning, just maybe what it said. As I was... Um, as I was preparing, I asked Jesus that question. Jesus wants you to ask, and I sense him say to me, I'm going to tell you what to ask for. And this is what Jesus said. I was reading the book of Acts, and in the book of Acts, in chapter 2, we see Pentecost happen. When we get to chapter 4, Luke actually asked for a second Pentecost. I don't know if you ever noticed it before. I don't have a slide for this, but let me read to you what this is what Jesus said. And this is what we should expect when we come to church. This is what Acts chapter 4, verse 29 and 30 says. If you remember, the Pentecost had happened and they'd gone out and there was persecution happening to them. And this is what Luke prays. He says, And now, O Lord, hear their threats and grant your servant great boldness in, the pre in their preaching. Send your healing power... May miracles and wonders be done by the name of your holy servant, Jesus. Isn't that a good prayer to pray for every Sunday morning for us? That the word would go out in boldness, that we would have healings and signs and wonders. That's what we want. And that's why I sense God wants to do this morning. And he's given me some specific words for some people. So I want to put them up, but... If, if you need healing this morning, maybe it's an opportunity for you to come forward to ask for prayer. If you need a miracle in your life, maybe you need to come forward. But here's some other thoughts that I had. Some people go through life adding years to their life. Others go through life adding life to their years. See, we have an ageing population. Our church is an ageing population. But God wants to speak to some of you very specifically this morning to say, he wants to add life to your years. He doesn't just want you to get a year older, a year older, and a year older. That's not how to live your life. But he wants to add life to your years as you get older. So for some of you, you long that. You long for that. That's a word for someone. Choices should be made in light of whose I am, not to determine who I am. You know... We're children of God. We're sons and daughters of the King. We shouldn't make choices thinking this will make me who I am. Don't look for a resting place. Instead, become one. Some of us are tired and weary, but God wants us to be a rest, his resting place to give us new strength. I love this one. 
Don't treat people according to their history. Treat them according to their destiny. You know, for some of us here who are older and we're now grandparents, let me tell you how God has allowed me this. You know, when my daughter was pregnant with our first grandchild, I prayed and said, God, what do you want me to trust you for? And our eldest grandson, Ollie, the word was a mighty man of faith. They live down the road from us now. Every day I see him, every day I speak into his life, he's a mighty man of faith. I read stories about faith to him. I have a ministry into his life. Our second oldest grandson, Lincoln. I got the word, a precious thought for him, his destiny, a sweet aroma of Jesus, that he would draw others to Jesus. I pray that into his life. And our third granddaughter, just recently, you know, Alyssa, a warrior princess. Do they go together? Absolutely. So you have the opportunity to speak destiny into people's lives. Take it. Joy. Jesus, nothing in between. Maybe there's something between you and Jesus today that stops you coming to him to receive life. Or when I shared my definition of sin, me living my life my way and letting God... Some, some, someone went, that's exactly me. That's how I've been living my life. Maybe you became a Christian and you just lived your life and left God out of it. But he wants to be part of that... Today could be your opportunity to come to Jesus. Or faith is living your life in such a way that doesn't make sense apart from the fact that God is. Some of you are living in a comfort zone and God is asking you to step out of your comfort zone and live your life in such a way that doesn't make sense apart that he exists. And he's probably said it to you in the past what he wants, but you haven't obeyed. God wants you to live by faith. And ultimately, this is Jesus' words, I came that they might have life and might have it in abundance to the full, exceedingly overflowing. So if we could have the worship team back up, I want you to respond to whatever Jesus is saying to you this morning. I want you to enjoy relating to the God who loves you who wants to communicate with you his precious thoughts and experience life to the full. That's my prayer for each one of us, that we would grow in this. So whatever God's placed on your heart, let me pray for you. Lord, we just ask your Holy Spirit to come right now. We pray, Father, that your Spirit would allow us to respond to what you're saying to us. Lord, have your way in our lives. Lord, we want to come to Jesus. We don't want to live it as an idea in our head and a, something in our heart. Lord, we want to respond to you this morning. In Jesus' name, amen.